Hi guys, welcome back to Glow with Tiny. My name is Isaiah, but you can call me Tiny. So today we'll be talking about my eh, about <laughs> my NYSC camp experience. NYSC is basically a program graduates do in Nigeria for 12 months. You work for the government for like a year. But before you start working for the government, you go to camp for three weeks. And the camp is where the drama is. So I was posted to Sokoto. I remember it was a Monday morning. My friend called me. I was like, check, check, check. I started posting to go. I checked and I saw my name and I saw Sokoto. No shade to Sokoto, but at that time I wasn't expecting the north. No shade to the north. Like the north is a beautiful place, but you know, with the whole Boko Haram thing, like you know, like it was. My friends were not just happy about the idea. I remember I called my mom and I told her. And she was like, la 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 Oh, we love check by way. Oh, we love by way. And. My dad was saying, um, don't bother yourself, you're not going to serve. So, but my sister kept like pushing me. She was like, I should just be positive, I should go to Sokoto and I should work and everything. So, I just took my sister as. <laughs> I took my sister as. <laughs> I took my sister's advice and I, you know, I got myself together. I had just two days. Camp was starting on Thursday and I just had Tuesday, Wednesday to prepare. I did my hair, I did my nails, <laughs> and um, I got my documents, I got everything together and you know, I was, and by Thursday morning I was ready. So my dad sent the driver to come and get me to the airport and everything. And I, I got to the airport, they delayed our flight for like an hour, so I just really took that one hour to reflect, like, okay, I'm going to the north, like, you know, like, it was, it was a lot, <laughs> I won't lie to you, but most people there were just chilling, like, they were in good spirits, like, were great, that, like, I was basically the only one that was moody, because I remember looking around, and people were just having a good time, just chilling, while getting to know other people, and I was just in one corner, like, so, eventually, we boarded, and we left, and everything, but I made a friend immediately, like, the girl that sat beside me, um, on the plane, uh, Yinka, she was really cool, so, like, we just hit, we just hit it off, like, at that point and she was going to Sokoto camp too because some other people were going to Kebi on that flight too so it was so we got along and everything so at the time we when we got at the time we landed in Sokoto people were asking around like at, at first when we landed it was so hot and we're saying like this is so hot and everything and I remember people at the airport telling us oh today is even a cool day today is a calm day like today is not hot and I was like so <laughs> People were asking around, like, oh, are you going to Kebi? Are you going to Sokoto? Are you? So, like, within five minutes, I saw other people that were going to Sokoto camp. So, like, I was not really stranded. We just got together. We got a cab and we left to the campground. So, we got to camp. We checked our stuff in. We got a bed. We, I got a bed space, you know. So, everything was just cool. Only for me to start registration, <laughs> I realized that I'd left my... Uh, certificate or something a statement of the one important document that I left it at home so like I tried to get a scanned copy I tried to do everything they photocopy they were like nope they wanted the original so I, had to, I called uh, my uncle to send the original to the bus and by road to go, from Lagos to Koto by road it's about two days so I had to wait two days Basically, I was already frustrated. At the, at the point, the driver that I was bringing it wasn't picking my colleague in, so I was just like, ah, I'm stranded. Like, it was. So eventually, I got the document, got to me. I did. I was like, I'm among the last few people that did their registration. So, thankfully, I did it. So, that was cool. That was out of the way. Then, the Monday, we started like our uh, like camp activities. The number one thing I did not like about camp was waking up early. If you know me or if you do, even if you don't know me like i do not like waking up early like waking up 5 a.m that was like a deal breaker like yo that was a hustle for me i won't even let you <laughs> that was a real hustle for me to wake up 5 a.m so number one waking up 5 a.m was an issue then um keeping us in the storm for long now you see nigerian government you have to do better like i don't understand you're taking us to all these far places only for us to stay in the sun for hours you wake us up 5 a.m we go out be on the campground do, do money devotion do this one do that one till like nine after we go and eat breakfast then we come back for lectures when we come for lectures again no seats nowhere for people to you know like it's like they know they are like deploying like 500 coppers to this state or 1,000 coppers how can't you provide like sitting arrangements like I don't understand like that was just that was 
that was just a turn off for me about camp. Like, for you to get somewhere to sit there was a hustle, unless you know someone. Or... So, another turn off for me in camp was the water situation. Like, there were times when the water came on, there were times when the water went off. So, if you can't meet up to those times, you have to do what I did. <laughs> I remember me and me, we used to steal people's water because there was really no other option, to be sincere. So we used to steal like just a little warm bowl from people's water until like we we'll get water. There were days where we did, we couldn't even get half pockets of water. We just had to like share. We just had to like share like two bowls. It was just a lot. So, uh, but um, there were a lot of good things about the camp experience. Basically, I met new people. I made friends. Basically, my friends were people that came together with me. Like we came on the same flight, so like we just became friends from there. Uh, so we had like our clique, we had, we tried camp food once, we didn't try it again, <laughs> it was, it was bad, so we had a place where we sit in Mami, we're just, you know, we're spending money really, then every night we chill, we drink, eat pepper soup, you know, it was just cool, like I was always looking forward to the evening time, because the days were always so stressful, so like the evenings we chill, relax, it was just cool, then I had a guy like, so, that was cool. <laughs> then uh, the camp used to be like a variety night for us and night, but we had our own thing. We used to do truth or dare, we used to do after our own. Those were like the peak of our days. Those were like the only fun moments we had, like the truth or dare. <laughs> that was so fun. So, like, we did that and everything. Then uh, another camp experience that I didn't like was the matching. Like the soldier in charge of I was in platoon one. The soldier in charge of my platoon was really making me like match. Like I was like, no, I was doing rubbish on purpose, but he just kept me there. I remember myself and Itunu, we didn't want to match. We yo, he kept us there. The third day, I couldn't walk. I couldn't. I could. I had asthma attack. Like, I could not even. I had. I had to be like, yo. I had to go to the clinic. I remember it was a female soldier that came to get me in the hospital because I couldn't stand up that day. She took me to the clinic. And I got to the clinic. They told me, oh, they don't answer people during parade time. So I was just sitting down there, crying, like. Eventually, one girl came to me and she said, hey, are you sure you don't want to see the doctor? And I was like, it's fine. Like, you didn't answer me. I just. <laughs> so, um. That was just a very, I don't want to remember that. Then aside that, uh, well, I started having reactions, like spots on my wrist, like, <laughs> and I went to the clinic again. The cream they gave me was not working, so it was just like, I was just going in circles. You go to the clinic every day, you give me another cream. And <sighs> so it was just, it was a lot, but then, Fast forward to the last week of camp, everybody tried to get redeployed. I mean, I thought I wasn't going to work because I had like up to like three people working on it for me, but people are just not reliable, I guess. So, um, I didn't get redeployed. Uh, some of us got redeployed, so it was just like, so we decided to stay like for two days after camp just to stay so because we really didn't think we would have like any reason to go back there like in future. So, we stayed. I I went to check my PPA out, my case of primary assignments, and it was really cool. I won't lie to you, Sukuto was fine. It was Sukuto was beautiful, but it was just, number one it was just so far from home, and the weather was was not just for me. So you, know, I just had to really play. So basically, on Friday we that uh, we left camp on a Wednesday. We stayed Wednesday, Thursday. We stayed like uh, we left camp on a Wednesday. Stay to Friday, so our flight was Friday. Only for me to get to the airport. I remember <laughs> the attendant just told me, like, to check myself in, and she told me, um, "Sorry, we don't have a visa or visa lap on today's flight. Your name is not on today's flight." And I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Please, then we are joking." Like, she was like, "No, we don't have your name on today's flight." I just I went to the to the toilet. She was like, "Oh, you have to stay for two more days. Maybe on Sunday we'll see what we can do." I was like, is, "I don't understand what you're saying. Is it my mistake or your mistake? Or I don't understand." So I, I went to the toilet. I was just crying. I was just confused. I was like, "What do I do?" Like, <laughs> my friends were with me. Though, like, uh, they were already boarding, but my friends stayed, and they were they, obviously 
they would have left me eventually but they were just really trying to know what's going to happen and everything so about like five minutes to the end of the boarding time they just came to uh, the, the attendant came to me and she was like um uh, sorry for the mistake your name is on today's so like, this is your I'm like, god i like yo i I was just so happy, so I left and everything. I made nice friends. I made school, I made cool friends. Uh, so uh, Soji, Itsunu, Shewa, like super cool, super mature people. It was just fun. It was just it was a fun experience, but you know, it, I guess it really shaped me and everything. Like if you can go through like situations like that, or more, you can face anything <laughs> in this life. <laughs> I was able to learn a few Alsa words like yeah, yeah, Kasua. I think that means how it's business. Um, um, laugh the allow. I guess that means uh, I don't know what that means. Um, Daiska. Daiska means bastard. I think. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll just ranting. I hope you guys are able to just understand or like get a picture of how my camp was and yeah please don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you guys think let me know if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys